Well, hello everyone. We're continuing our back to school series. My name is Bryce Kuhn, and as you can see, or if you're listening, we're with your LSU men's basketball coach, Matt McMahon. Coach, we were just talking before. Hope you had a good summer. Any uh, memorable moments other than uh, I know you said there's a driver's license with one of the kids. Now, any big moments though this summer? Uh, had a unique experience. Got to go uh, on a recruiting trip over to Istanbul, Turkey, for the 17 and under world mm -hmm. championships. First time I'd ever done that. It was. Uh, really a unique uh, but uh, great experience. Uh, went over with Coach uh, JC, uh, Jalen Courtney Williams, one of our new, new assistants, and uh, really enjoyed it. That opportunity, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, you said it's your first time. What does that offer in terms of exposure for you guys and just being able to connect maybe uh, with a new recruiting base? Well, I think for us, uh, we, obviously we were there following Team USA. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and the great talent that they had with that group, but also to, you know, at LSU, you can recruit globally and uh, with the, also the hire of David Patrick and, uh, you know, who was an assistant coach for Australia in the Olympics this summer, uh, just a once in a lifetime experience for him, uh, really opens up a lot of different avenues from a recruiting standpoint here at LSU for us. Obviously, Coach, I mentioned back to school series. Kids are going to be ready to uh, get into classes, obviously, here on Monday. When you look at um, just year three and, and just the excitement, I mean, you guys, uh, you know, you returned some guys. We're hearing some good development, you know, internally from, from some guys. And then, obviously, this freshman class, which I know you're excited about. Just maybe your excitement level for what the fans might be able to see and, and just getting here in year three. Yeah, I'm fired up. I, I really love our team. We had a great summer. Uh, in this new era, with the transfer portal, uh, you're trying to find that right hybrid model for how to build a roster. And I really like where we landed this year from a retention standpoint. Uh, multiple guys now in their second and third year in the program. I think that's so critical uh, in player development and understanding a system, uh, familiarity with the league and so forth. Uh, and then we were able to go out and, and sign a top 10 high school class in the country and uh, all three, Curtis Givens, Victorious Miller, and Rob Miller, uh, great talents, all about the things we want to be about here in our program and really excited with them. And uh, the final piece is, I, I think, the portal and, and to add experience. And the three guys we got, you know, Cam Carter coming back home uh, from Donaldsonville, 15-5 uh, and five last year at Kansas State. He's really set the standard this summer for how you work. Yeah. Uh, great toughness, elite defender. Uh, I think he's going to be a great leader on our team. Jordan Sears uh, coming in from UT Martin, where it you know, just had a monster year. Now he's got to translate it up as he moves up in level, but was the only player in the country last year, 650 points, 140 rebounds, 140 assists, and 75 threes. So you know, a lot of proven success there. And then Jai Bailey's been uh, terrific coming from Richmond, another great perimeter defender. Uh, I think you see that as a theme and what we tried to address in recruiting, not just scoring, but we needed to really improve on the defensive side of the ball and the perimeter, and I think we were able to do that in the portal. Obviously, Coach, roster construction is something that's changed so much from when you obviously started coaching and then to now. How have you managed it just with, you know, we mentioned this, but taking a little time for yourself, your staff as well, and, and not being basketball 24-7. I know it has to be like that, <laughs> but is, is there an opportunity for you to give your staff a little reprieve? I don't think so. <laughs> maybe, maybe somewhere down the road, but uh, you know, when you're rebuilding, it's a 24-7, 365 deal. Uh, but I'm, I'm so excited about where we've landed. I, this is the type of roster construction that we want. Uh, and it starts, you know, I, I hear Coach Kelly talk about it a lot too, the player retention aspect of it. You know, when you start getting players in your program, they understand the process uh, that goes into the daily habits and discipline you need uh, to perform at a high level. And you, know, you look at like guys like Tyrell Ward and Jalen Reed, now their third year in the program, took a jump from year one to year two, now need to take the next step. and. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's tough right now to get away, but, but I think, uh, you know, this summer we were able to, to have some time to slow down a little bit. And then we're also implementing new staff members. Yeah. And so that's been important for us, you know, getting new ideas, new energy into the program, and now getting everyone on the same page, you know, for how we're going to be moving forward. Talk about same page, talk about, you know, understanding what you want. 
I know it's still early. You guys were able to do some summer workouts. You were able to see some things. What are some of the maybe uh, keys that you want to see this team take on as their identity? I mean, we're going to be far from a finished product when you guys get into your non-conference and conference play, but what are some of those things you want to see early on? Well, we tried to be very simple in what we did this summer, and, and it's really about establishing a winning culture. And uh, so I, I think the foundation always has to be how hard you play, how you compete, uh, the unselfishness and toughness you're able to build into your program. Uh, those have to be the non-negotiables. And, and now, uh, you know, tried to be very open-minded from a personnel standpoint. I, I certainly wasn't trying to establish who our starters are this summer. Uh, just want that foundation in place, and now the players have the opportunity to earn whatever role uh, that they want to have on this year's team. So it was a really productive summer for us, and uh, I, I like the direction. I like the mix of youth and experience, uh, and now I think leadership becomes so important. We're trying to be very intentional in developing the leadership of our team, and, and I think that's going to be a big key for us as well. You talked about retention and a couple of those names, and obviously Derek Fountain is a guy too that that you know is um, is a part of that group. Just talk about what you've seen out of some of these guys that, from a leadership perspective, and just kind of you know taking the bar, maybe being a coach out there on the field or well, on the court. <laughs> Number one, really proud of Derek. Yeah, I just graduated, uh, walked across the stage uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, with his degree from LSU, and now he gets to come back and have his his bonus COVID year. Uh, and it's his third year in the program as well. Uh, and so we expect big things from him. I expect him to get back. You know, he, he played at a much higher level two years ago. Uh, you think back to the game against Alabama where he had 26 points and seven rebounds, uh, the performance he had against Wake Forest. Uh, you know, I expect big things from him there. Uh, I think Jalen Reed, I, when, one thing you'll see when you see our players this fall when we get to practice, uh, coach Mike Chapman, who's a Baton Rouge native and our new strength coach coming in from Stanford, did terrific work with our players this summer. Jalen Reed's 252 pounds right now. And uh, I think he's had a terrific offseason. And you know, I think you'll see that uh, strength that he's gained in, in the weight room carry over to the court. You mentioned, obviously, you've got veterans that are in year three of their time in the program. But these freshmen, I mean, we talked about it a little bit. This is an exciting class. When you turn on the highlight tape and there's a reason LSU fans can be excited, how have you seen them kind of um, just assume their roles? And, and not necessarily on the court, but just as freshmen in this program, but not saying, not, not taking their foot off the gas pedal. Well, the thing I've enjoyed most about all three is how they've competed and how they've worked. Uh, they really came in uh, and, and set a high standard this summer. You know, it's great. I think we were one of seven schools with three top 60 uh, high school seniors uh, in the, the recruiting class, and, and that's all great, and it looks good on paper, but uh, the, the recruiting rankings and stars and all that don't matter once you get here. And, and I thought all three came in and, and were relentless in their work, uh, obviously all three very talented, uh, but, but I think they understand what goes into the – competitiveness you have to have and and they came in wanting to establish a role for themselves in, in year one and uh, really pleased with their development so far we talked with Jay Johnson on the baseball side of things and he mentioned the feeling of having the right guys in the room as a staff and you mentioned yeah. uh, you know having uh, this staff and, and and making sure you have the right pieces what's your feeling you know obviously games will tell us a lot but what's your feeling about the group that you have kind of going into battle with you on that sideline oh I, I love where we're at you know, from a staff and a, a roster standpoint, uh, I think we have a lot of selfless people in the program who are all about winning, and that's where you need to start. Uh, but from a coaching staff standpoint, you know, we returned some, some really good coaches, and then being able to go outside and, and bring in David Patrick, Jalen Courtney Williams, Mike Chapman in, in the weight room, uh, I think has been really good for our program and will serve us well uh, as we get into the season one together. I'm going to let you reflect a little bit here. Obviously, you've been in the coaching game for a while. You know, uh, you, you've gotten your feet wet down here at LSU. What, what is something maybe that you've learned about yourself? Coaches always say you never stop growing and learning. But what, what's something that you maybe learned about yourself just in your time here in Baton Rouge but that you're trying to carry here into 2024? Well, number one, I love it. I mean, this is an amazing place, uh, getting to be a part of the, the LSU brand and uh, the, the global presence that it has, and then just the great community here in Baton Rouge. Uh, the campus, phenomenal. 
uh, has been great experience for me and, and, and my family as well. Uh, but I think handling adversity, mm. you know, it's uh, obviously it hasn't been smooth uh, from day one, but the goal is to, to make consistent progress. Uh, you know, the way we were able to finish the season last year uh, with, with the four quad one wins and uh, build some momentum into recruiting into the spring and, and now get to carry that into this season uh, is going to be critical for us. Taking a way too early look at this season, you've got conference schedules just got released to the media and the public. It's exciting. Uh, you guys have some fun road trips, but some fun places, uh, fun teams to play over here in the PMAC. Your excitement level to welcome some some really quality competition, and then just maybe a quick overview of this SEC, which I feel like has gotten even deeper. Well, I think you start with trying to create an incredible atmosphere mm -hmm. here in the PMAC, and you look at that Kentucky win last year, uh, the environment, the energy in the building. Uh, we know how loud it gets uh, there in the PMAC. Uh, Want to continue to build on that. And I think when you look at the league, you know, you're in a position where really moving forward, it's always going to be eight to ten teams out of the SEC going to the NCAA tournament. So uh, there, there's plenty of high-level games. Once you get to January, February, and March, uh, we wanted to have a good balance in the non-conference. Uh, excited about the trip to the Greenbrier. Uh, where we'll play Pitt in the first round of that tournament. You know, have Florida State coming in to the PMAC as part of the ACC-SEC Challenge. Uh, and then we're doing the, the series with SMU, which I think will be great. We're going to play in Dallas at the G League Arena of the Dallas Mavericks. And then the following year, SMU will return the game to the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans. So uh, we always want to try and schedule those games in NBA arenas. So that will be great as well. Uh, last one for you here. You, you talked about uh, the adversity aspect and you guys being able to overcome that from the mental battle. Um, this conference offers opportunities to where, and I think we talked about this in one of your media availabilities last year, if you lose on a Saturday, you're going to have a chance <laughs> to get right back on the horse on Tuesday, whether it's on the road or at home. Is that one of the uh, the challenges, but also the, the welcoming things that in this conference you might find yourself feeling down and out, but then you can turn around and be right back in that bubble mix or even in the tournament? Well, I think so. Even if you look at last season, we, we did enough in the league. We just weren't good enough in November, December. We, we didn't get it done there to put ourselves in position to be in the NCAA tournament. But even you look the last two years, last year, Mississippi State, 8-10 and 10, into the NCAA tournament. The year before, an 8-10 and 10 Arkansas team, that was the 10 seed yeah. in the SEC tournament, goes to the Sweet 16. So, uh, you know, every night is going to be a battle. I, mean, I think last year was a five-way tie for second place. So uh, it's an unbelievable league. Uh, but if you're a competitor, that's what you want to be a part of here in the SEC. All right, Coach, well, we appreciate the time. Last thing for you, a message to fans. Uh, but, you know, wanting to pack out the PMAC, but, you know, message to fans. We're back to school. we still got a couple, <laughs> a couple months before we start this season. Yeah, you're going to love our team. Uh, we've got a, a very talented group. Uh, I think they're about the right things, about winning. Uh, you, I mentioned it earlier in our talk, but just the atmosphere, whether it was Kentucky at home last mm -hmm. year or Arkansas at home two years ago, it makes an impact. It makes a difference, a difference and we want to continue to build on that and uh, come out and support this team. You're going to love them. I think we have the right mix of returners, and, and you start to get you know, some investment mm -hmm. as a fan when you get to watch Jalen Reed and Tyrell Ward in their development. And now you bring in this talented freshman class. And I think with what we've been able to add from the portal, I think 47 points a game in those three senior guards that we brought in. So it's going to be an exciting team. Can't wait to get started. I can see the excitement.